me and Swan are just surfing the net, aren't we? We are. Hello. Hello, yeah, you can see you just. And I come over with this. BP urges government to prepare for geoengineering option. Businessgreen.com. And I need to read this to you because I'm as fucking... God! MPs urge government to prepare for geoengineering option. With small-scale geoengine products already underway, MPs of one government must begin on the necessary regulatory framework. A parliamentary select committee of MPs warned yesterday that the groundwork for regulating geoengineers' products must start now. The House of Commons Science and Technology Committee has claimed... Excuse me, train. Come on! has claimed that hesitation may mean multilateral agreement on an international legislative framework is not reached before the impact of dangerous climate change is felt. The committee published the findings of an inquiry undertaken as part of the unique collaboration with an equivalent body in the US House of Representatives on the same day, with Chair Phil Willis give evidence to the US committee via a video link. Speaking ahead of the US hearing, Willis said, we're better subject than geoengineer where international collaboration is essential if we are to explore the understandings fully, its potential to provide a backdrop to a first kind of collaboration between UK and the USA scrutiny committees. Geoengineering refers to the controversial field of research that purposes using technology to reduce or reverse the effects of human-induced climate change. The British MP report for work... Go away. Some pop-up just happened. The British MP... Go away! I'm not touching you! <laughs> the British MP report called for work and around GN engineering to start now in order to provide enough time to fully explore the technological, environmentally, political and regulatory issues. Uh, some scientists believe that the purpose of geoengine techniques, technologies such as putting mirrors into space or seeding clouds to help reflect the sun's energy are artificially producing algae blooms in the ocean that can soak up carbon dioxide oxide, that would offer an important plan B should efforts to cut greenhouse gas emissions fail. However, others that have argued geoengineering products could be catastrophic unintended consequences on the climate and would also distract from the urgent needs to cut emissions. The select committee report concluded that governments had to begin looking at how to regulate geoengineering products because small-scale testing is already underway. Hear that? It's already underway. It's also warned that the worst case scenario, failure to set up an international regulatory framework could enable a single country to un un literally affect the um, Earth's climate. The report recommended that the regulatory regimes may be based on a graded geoengineering technique which controls based on yet on, on a set of wild, wildly agreed principles. Continued on page two. We're off to page two now. Willis said that the geoengineering could affect the entire planet and, as a result, it would be foolish to ignore its potential to minimise or even reverse human-induced climate change. He added that there was no sound reason not to begin the groundwork for regulatory arrangements immediately. The news came on the same day that the Royal Society announced it is to form a solar radiation management gov governance initiative. Now, I go to www.solarcycle24.com and I look at what the sun's doing every day they spray. Nine out of ten times, the sun is having a storm of some kind, right? And, taking into consideration, we've had a no-fly zone over England because of a volcano that all, funny enough, happened to be going off after Harp had been on for about a day and a half, similar to like the earthquakes that have happened in China and whatever else, this bit sort of puts it all together. So instead of getting hold on a second, I've got to pause now, Mrs is ringing, bye. But as I was saying, she told me not to swear either. I, kids might watch it then and then they'll learn something. Anyway, I was saying about the solar thing, right? So volcanic eruptions and the solar, whenever it has a magnetic storm of some kind or a flares release, they seem to spray. Um, if you look at certain things and look at harp as well there's a harp link I'm going to put both these links in the video description so you can go there each day and look for yourself right um, anyway uh, solar radiation management concepts involve limiting the amount of radiation that reaches the earth's surface and includes proposed such as pulping, pumping sulfur into the stratosphere stratospheric sulfide aerosols into the stratosphere to force the same kind of global calling call that occurs after massive volcanic eruptions. Mm. Bit too much of a coincidence. The report also follows the release of research this week claiming that the proposals to seed parts of the ocean with iron in order to encourage the growth of carbon dioxide absorbing algae could result in the creation of toxins that poison wildlife. Oh, let's go ahead with that, shall we? 
The study, which appeared in the Proceeds of National Academic of Sciences, said that findings seriously raised serious concern about ocean fertilising products, uh, projects, a number of which have been already undertaken. Let's have a closer look. But as you can see here, um, it's got all the different types of things that it does. And down here, it's got a key. It says the call, in fact, potential to change Earth's energy budget. So a blue dot, the more blue dots means the better it is. And then the readiness within years is one time, you know, and within centuries. And then the cost, cheap to expensive. So then when you look here, so, so the bio car, that, that's sort of not going to do too much and it takes a lot of time and it costs a lot. Right, so that won't work. So ocean fertilisation, it's not really ready, it costs quite a lot and it don't do too much. Carbon addition, limestone, it doesn't really do too much. You then move up here and you see cloud seed has got four stars. Are you alright? Ow. Atomising seawater creates clouds to reflect sun rays. It's not far from being ready. It costs quite a bit. Floor. Unknown weather affects patchy success, fouls to prevent acidic oceans, right? And above it, you've got aerosols, and it's four again. Particles in the stratosphere reflect sun rays. Readiness is ready now or near enough, and it costs much. But the floor is risk of ozone depletion, unknown weather effects, fouls to prevent acidic oceans, which is what we're all complaining about. Foresting. Which, yeah, that's great, it does a lot, right? But it's readiness, it's ready and it don't cost too much. But the floor is they need a large area of land. Well, that's bollocks, yeah? You know, there was some guy done a thing on, um, on here that um, took the whole of the population of the, of the entire globe and worked out that if everyone had one acre, we could all live in Australia and the rest of the world would be free. So it's just bad planning. Um, reflective crop crops, that's a bit interesting. Crops that reflect more sunlight, so they wouldn't look green. I suppose they reflect all the white light spectrum. They'd look black, wouldn't they? Large area, at large land area, or white, wouldn't they? Needs fails to prevent acidic oceans. Um, as you know, with, with this, reflecting crops, because crops reflect the red part of the spectrum and the blue part of the spectrum, and they reflect most of the colours in between. Um, some, some are in some yellow, um, mainly green, and hence why they look green. Um, that's why the grass is green, because they absorb blue and reds and reflect the other colours. Um, artificial trees, CO2 sucked from air and stored underground. It's not really ready, costs a fucking massive amount of money, I just swore. Oh dear. Large geological cache needed, so that's not really ready. Space mirrors, yay, really good idea. Yeah, they'll work, they'll reduce it really well. Um, readiness, ooh. Long time, long time, costs too much money, and the floor is unknown weather effects have failed to prevent the city ocean. So it's going to be this, this, or this, and then you know you're not going to go to foresting because that's that's the, that's the answer. That's the answer. Look, what's it floor? What you know, every 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 floor in every other one of these things, right, is is some kind of catastrophic you know event. But this one, you know, will do it itself. It won't. It's ready. What do you mean readiness? You know, oh, fucking hell. Just plant some trees. How <laughs> can you not be ready? <coughs> Cost not much, but the only flaw there is is they need land. Oh, bully fool. You just, hello? You know, it doesn't really take too much of someone with too much of an IQ to work out that foresting's probably the answer. How about we just leave it alone to nature? Because, funny enough, Hmm. How about we searched our whole galaxy looking for alien life within this solar system and funny enough the Earth happened to be placed directly in the right place for the sun for us to whew, have all the minerals and the things on this Earth to be what we are, right? How many other planets have we found within our region of space that has got intelligent life on it yet? I'm not saying that there isn't because there probably is but it's further away, right? So really if the Earth has survived to get us here, right? Um, and it's been here for millions of years. The only people who are destroying it is us with our bollocks of consume, consume, crap, crap, crap. All we all need to do is start taking responsibilities for our own actions and stop manufacturing the earth like it's some kind of, I don't know, just, oh, it's just shocking. It's simple, isn't it? You know, what do you need to live in the world? Uh, food, warmth and water. There's not too much more to survive, you know, you don't see animals sort of building new apartments to go and live in, do you? You know, they just live in with the cycles and nature, you know, and that's what needs to happen. It's not rocket science. You know, let's go back to using the natural resources that are renewable, i.e. they grow, and you can grow them again, you know, food. <laughs>